seated. You gather tonight because you wish to hear the word, also known as scripture, also known as the words of Jesus. For this is why we come to celebrate this day. Now, some of you may be already praying for fewer words from the pulpit. But I remind you that actually the word comes in various forms of our time of worship. It also comes in our hymns and in our prayers, in the silence, and in the readings. But I think most profoundly that the word comes in the company of others when gathered together on a night like we are here as well as when we're just one-on-one -on -one with each other. The Word becomes real through honest and humble conversations about life. When we are transfixed through the voice-to-voice, -voice, stringing together the stories of our lives, that's when God's Word breaks into us. Tonight, I do not have a new story to tell you. Tonight, I don't have any new details of the nativity tale untold. Tonight, I do not have much to say except this. Life is good, but hard. Life will remain hard until we become more and more comfortable in sharing our stories. When I was the young age of two of my sons, I remember going on Christmas Day to Duke Hospital for a scheduled surgery to fight a returning tumor in my left leg. And like the shepherds tonight, I was terrified. Yet Duke Hospital has this amazing oncology floor just for children who gather around the entire globe to this place to receive miracles through the gifts of those medical shepherds tending the flocks that arrive. The pediatric oncology floor was filled with humble, honest, words about healing the flesh. And it was on that floor that I became aware at the young age of nine of the reality of someone's story can end in a moment's notice while also miracles are equally true. You see, friends, true conversation is whenever we make space to really talk about how we are doing and feeling and are afraid. We cannot be helped if we hide from any voice asking for our truth. And tonight, such a truth is born into our world yet again. You see, the prophets, since the beginning of that biblical story, have been forecasting the coming of Christ into the world. Many of their faces line up in our upper windows here, where they have been sharing the same story from generation to generation. And yet, if you look at their faces, you will see that they're all tired. Tired like we might be a little bit tonight past a bedtime. And sometimes we feel like we're too tired to dive into those hard conversations. But hopefully, because we have shown up, we want to get a sense of how to tie the word that is Jesus to the Christmas story 
because the world in which we live continues to sell us things that are unfulfilling in our lives, like the latest cell phone purchase. Earlier today, we went old school with the children's sermon as I showed them how to make a cup and string telephone and talk to each other. The reason why I did this is because I truly fear that our children and our grandchildren will only know a world where phones are being designed not to use for talking. Right? We're losing the importance of conversation. God's word has always been shared from voice to voice connections. One example was an aging parishioner asking for prayers about hard decisions of when to know to give up certain fights in life, when to think about moving to a new place for more assistance, when to stop driving, when to limit one's health care because they recognize that their body is aging faster than medicine can keep up. And it's in those types of voices that I hear the old prophets who were tired themselves but continued to be faithful to God sharing honestly their story with God and each other. In our gospel today, it ends with the shepherds getting word after another long day. The angel addresses the shepherd in the same set of words spoken through the prophets, spoken to Jesus' mother and father and almost everyone in Scripture. When the angel shows up and the Lord stands before them, they are terrified. Quickly, the angel says, do not be afraid. God's word is first hard to hear in the midst of life. And yes, church is here for celebration moments like we have this evening. And we are grateful that we have come together to share in this experience. For tonight, we celebrate the miracle of the birth of Christ in the Word made flesh. But tomorrow, we ask for a miracle of the Word to break into the hurt that we might hide from others in our life. Isaiah opens tonight with the story of the people who have walked in great darkness have seen the light, who lived in the land of deep darkness, and yet the light has shined upon them. Darkness is real for those who do not turn to each other and to God for healing. God's word came in the darkness to the shepherds who were out tending the flock. It came to the Holy Family who's in the manger, and it also comes to us in our own moments. But my friends, we cannot be fooled to think that there was not an element of fear in the manger this night. Tonight is a story reiterating a life that is hard but when work together with God can be very good. When a dark story becomes a good story, open up in the company of connections together. This is what it means to be part of Christ's community. This is what it means for the word to become Jesus. So we think of our own conversations. We acknowledge that there are hardships 
we acknowledge that there are times when we are required to be humble, to be honest, and to do holy work. I will risk being another unpopular prophet to challenge you. Even if you have bought your loved one a new cell phone or yourself, keep it packaged up tomorrow. Instead, use that time to connect with each other. Find a chance to sit with someone and give your undivided attention. Because it's in those moments that I have seen miracles show up when someone takes ownership of a realness that lives inside of them, a fear, a darkness, where they can help to move towards the joy together. For when we talk voice to voice, where we can see the expression on each other's faces, we can get through those hard times, no matter how tired we might feel. And I believe that the more that we practice this as a human race with each other, the more we recognize that God is always breaking into the words of our own life. For practice, time and time again, it is the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ that can lift up us out of any darkness that we may find ourselves in and replace it with a life filled with joy. This is the truth that is born today. That Jesus came into the world to connect God's goodness with humanity. Amen.